Uh, I'm a freelancer, so I uh, work on code, write a book, um, actually do a YouTube channel, so a little bit on the, on the side. So all kinds of things, but they're all related to Java. It's all okay. very Java-centric. Yeah. Cool. And so you're here today to talk about Java 10? Yeah. So what's your favorite feature? So my favorite feature in Java 10 is maybe var, but I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> but it will be uh, application class data sharing is maybe like a hidden gem. I didn't really know about it, and it's like an obtuse name. And um, when I, but when I looked into it, I found out that this may be, I mean, var is very shiny and big, but this may actually be a very, very down-to-earth feature that could help a lot of uh, people making the application mm -hmm. launch much, much quicker. So I thought I'd explore it, I had a lot of fun with it, and I thought it would be a good thing to share here. Okay, yeah. so, so explain a little bit what it is. Uh, okay. So, so uh, when the JVM runs, uh, it, lo it loads classes on demand. So whenever you need a class, it has to load it, which means it goes to the class path, or later maybe the module path, but anyway, it goes to some path, looks for the jar, loads the class, verifies the bytecode, and then puts it into some internal data structure, and from there, the actual bytecode is then later executed. And all this process takes a lot of time. And when you run a large application, it, you can load easily like thousands, even maybe even dozens of thousands of classes. And that, so then it takes a considerable time to do all that. But when you launch the application 20 times with the same jars, on the s with the same class path, you get the same result. So you always do the same work again and again. And not you, the JVM does the same work on each launch. And that sounds like a waste of time. So why not do this work once and then kind of like archive this class data? Data and that's what the feature does. Application class data sharing is the class the the, the class data that was generated for the JDK classes and the application classes. Share that, don't dump that into an archive, and then the next launch use that archive and don't do any of the other stuff anymore. Just gr go there for the classes and grab them right from there. Cool. And you wanted to share a demo. Yeah, I want to show a demo. Right. Okay. Yeah. So let me switch screen. Ooh. Wait. I just see now that I'm mirroring. Oh. Uh, let's unify the screens. That there we go. Right, yep. great. So this is my highly complex business application. It prints hello application class data sharing, and that's it. Um, so at first, let's build the thing. Um, let me install. Okay, that's great. Then we can launch it, and because it Java 10 is not my default JDK, I have to do it like this, Java 10. Then we launch the jar, which is should be, I think I copied it in this folder. Um, what's its name again? There we go, java10.jar. Hello application class data sharing. Okay, that was simple. Now let's see how long this takes. Um, let's do the same command again and let's time it. And we see that it takes about 76 milliseconds wall clock time. And this is of course not a stable number. Whenever you run it again, it changes, but it's usually in my machine between 70 and 90 milliseconds. So now let's do what I just described. Let's um, create su such an archive. The first thing that you would need for that is actually a list of classes that you want to archive. You don't have to archive all the things, everything that's on your class path or everything that's in the JDK, you can just create a list. And the good thing is that the JVM already comes with such a list, so you don't actually have to create one for, for yourself. If you really want to, the easiest way to start is just create an archive for just a select, select few JDK classes. And the JVM supports you that, so you can just go Java 10 and then minus x share is the feature and then colon dump will dump this and now if you see down here I get actually an error uh, because it could not um, write the archive and the reason for that is oh it actually says here unable to create archive file because it creates this archive file in the JDK install which is on my case in a machine that I need administrator right so on, on, a, on a directory so I sudo this thing And now it works. And now we can have a look at this. Uh, let's see whether I remember the exact path. Otherwise, I may have to look it up. Um, JDK 10, and then I think it goes into lip. No classes. C. OK. Um, let's not look this up. Um, it's somewhere. <laughs> and I know <laughs> it's, six, it's 18 megabytes. Okay. So it's a very compar comparatively small archive. And uh, we can now use it. Um, so you're in the terminal window? What are you using? Yeah, this oh is yeah, terminal this window. is yeah, yeah. terminal window. It just comes down because right, right, right. so it's easier to use. But yes. Um, so now let's use the command we used before this. But now let's say x, x share on, which activates this feature. And now nothing changes. It still works. But if we time this now, we can see that now it's, it's almost half the time. Mm. So that was a considerable improvement. 
over what we had before. And this is kind of the um, this is an extreme case in the sense that I only have I just now created an archive just for um, some JDK classes, and now I have just one application class. If this would be a real application, uh, so I saved basically I saved. Um, I did not load 500 something classes, I just load the one application class and the other 500 one I took from the archive. So that's a mm -hmm. massive relative improvement. If you have a regular application with thousands of classes on top of that, you will still see maybe 30 milliseconds, but maybe you don't notice that that much if your entire launch time is much higher. What we can do though, we can actually have a look at what was going on here um, and how many classes were loaded. Let's see whether I can do this. X log is a new unified logging, came in Java 9. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can say, I want to know about load and class. And then you get a lot of things. And you will see this source shared objects file. So all of these files were loaded, all the ones we see, all these classes were loaded from the shared objects file, but not all of them. Down here somewhere, you can see my class. This is my class. And it was loaded from the jar because we did not include it. We can use grab to figure out how many were loaded from here? Let's do it like this. So I run the thing again, and now we get all the lines that do not say shared objects file, which is the first um, log message, which just says um, some I opened this file. But then you will see that actually some classes that come from the JDK were also not in the archive. And the reason is that under some specific circumstances, the class cannot be archived. This, the technical details that, I'm not, that I didn't even re that I don't get in all detail myself, but uh, some classes will be left out of the archive. So in this case, it happens for two classes: random access file and signature file verifier, apparently. And then again, my class. Great. Um, oh, by the cool. way, up here there was like 500 something classes in there um, wow. that we used to load just for Hello World. <laughs> um, so that means now we actually what we used now was class data sharing. Not okay. application class data sharing because we just shared the class data from the JDK from one run to the next. But now we can also use application class data sharing. But that gets a little bit more complicated. So we have to add a couple more command lines. And I'm not going to type them all out because it takes too long. I created a small script. I'm going to walk you through that instead. So let's start up here. Um, this is basically what I just did. Now I timed the Java command to run the application. And then we have seen it takes like 70 seconds or 80 milliseconds, sorry. Then I create the ar archive, I dumped the thing here, and then I turned sharing on, and then I ran it again. And um, so this, this is where we're at right now. So now let's continue here. Um, what we now do, we want to run with application class data sharing. So the first thing we have to do, we have to use the flag use app CDS to activate the feature. Mm -hmm. And this will only work on OpenJDK builds, because or this is a commercial feature in Oracle JDK 8 and 9 and 10, and the public available download of Oracle JDK does not contain it. So you have to use OpenJDK, um, otherwise this flag will not work. And then what we want to do now is, we, as I said earlier, we have to create a class list. We can either use a class that's already there, or we can actually record our own. And we, what we do is we launch the application and we tell the JVM, whenever you load a class, store, like record that information and then later dump it into this, this file, class.lst. Um, so yeah, let's do that. Let's go, let's, let's in, execute the entire script and I will jump to the relevant spots. So now all, all the things happen that are in the script. But what we see here, we have the appcds class lst file. Um, so let's look into that. It's long and contains all the classes that the JDK loaded, but it's just a regular text file. There's nothing special in there. It's just, just slash separated fully qualified class names in the order in which they were loaded. And then you can see very at the bottom here that uh, my class comes very late. And then later you can see, for example, the shutdown, shutdown lock. That's interesting. But you, know, you can see actually the shutdown class is loaded later because it's only needed once I'm done. OK, so what do we do next? Now we have the list of classes. The next thing we tell the JDK, uh, sorry, we tell the JVM to create an archive. Uh, just m much like before, we used uh, XShare dump for that. But uh, because we want to include application classes, we say use the application CDS feature. And then also we have to tell it, this is the shared class list file, what we, which we just looked at, classes.lst. So take that as input, generate an archive which contains only the classes that are in there. <laughs> and if I want, I can manually um, edit this file and add additional files, uh, classes if I want to. 
And then I also have to tell it where to put the archive file. We didn't do that earlier, and the result was that it landed in the JVM, which makes sense if you only use JDK classes. But it would be weird to have a file in the JVM, in the JV JDK folder, which contains information about classes that come from my application. So that would be weird. So what we do instead is we uh, create, we tell where to dump, the sh where to create the shared archive file. In the same folder, we create an app.jsa file. And then we don't actually launch the application. We just point the JVM to the class path. So we, we can see here that the message create archive for recorded classes came before. So let's go there. Um, let's execute the script again. And then let's go there. Create archive for recorded classes. That's the message here. And now we see this, this huge block, which creates all these classes. Um, and does a couple of things. And you can see, for example, here that you get 666 classes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and once you're done, um, it dumped the thing, it dumped the file into the f uh, the archive to the file, and we can have a look at the file, which I think is app.jsa. So now it's it's nine megabytes, which is smaller than the one uh, that I created in within the JDK, which was 18 megabytes, because now we just use the classes that I really need for this specific application, which are fewer than the JDK would include by default. Of course, if you have a large application, this file could be much larger. So I took this uh, for, for a ride on a desktop application, and for about 25,000 25, classes, I ended up with about 250 megabytes um, that I'll finally that end up in the, in the archive. OK, so then the next step is to actually use the thing. So now again, we activate the feature on the last command. We, in this case, I also want to lock um, what, what's going on but it's of course not necessary. We turn on the feature and we tell it where to find the archive file, where to load the classes from. And then we go with the regular jar command as before. In this specific case, I'm going again grabbing for the, which were not, the objects which were not shared, the class were not shared, which is this output. And you can see here that my class is no longer among them because mm -hmm. we included my class in the archive. So now it's not on the list of files that could not be loaded from the archive, uh, classes that could not be loaded from the archive. That makes sense. And only the paths class could not be loaded. And this also means that uh, because before we had like three classes that could not be loaded, now it's just one class that could not be loaded, even though we include just one more class. The reason is that, of course, within the JVM, you take a different, different execution path. And you can see that the one of the classes that we did not load was the one that, that, that validated jars, because we don't need that anymore now, because we're now um, loading, the files, uh, loading the classes directly from the archive. So of course now when we, when we time this, we would see no difference. It's just one more class from the archive. So mm -hmm. you can see no measurable impact uh, having one more class in there. But if you again use the use it on larger application, I observed that I ended up with about 12 seconds launch time instead of 15 seconds. I mean, of course, the, the application does way more than just lo loading classes. But I think that's, fair, that's a fairly good improvement, um, which is otherwise usually hard to come by because we've optimized launch already, tried to make as many things lazy as possible. And this is a nice, basically a free gift that you can use. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, so I thought that was what was rather interesting. Cool. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Nice name, Bill. Thank, Thank you. you. Very complex also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like the script. Of steps. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so if, 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 if uh, watchers want to um, go deeper into that, they can just Google, I guess, for application class data sharing and click either the link to the JEP or the link to my blog, which is codefx.org. Sure. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. And I go to the steps in a little bit more detail, and you can see how this um, plays together. And do you have that on GitHub so people can just download oh this? Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. This, uh, so this demo project, the Java 10 demo project, I made one for Java 9, which is fairly huge. The one for Java 10 is like, it's just this and VAR so far, <laughs> because there are not many user-facing features in there. But yeah, sure, you can go to um, GitHub and uh, I wish. So CodeFX oh. is my blog. It's also on the it's right. linked from the blog post. And you look for CodeFX on GitHub, and then you will somehow find it. I'm sure you manage. Right, and I will <laughs> add that to the, to the oh, video on YouTube. Great. That would be uh, <laughs> that easier. So it's in the description box, apparently. Yes, <laughs> below. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you for yeah. having me. Thank Bye. you for the um, for the demo. That was awesome. Sure. Thanks. Bye.